All right, welcome back. <clears throat> we are still in lesson number three. We're still dealing with the contracts. These are of sufficient importance. That's why we are speaking rather lengthily at a contract because it's very imperative that you understand at least the basic knowledge and the workings so that when you fill out the forms, remember the lawsuit back in 1963 that said we have to have sufficient knowledge and understanding of the contract to fill out the form. So that's why we're going through these in sections so that you understand what a contract is. So now we're going to talk about consideration. Consideration <clears throat> in a contract is payment or money. It is a vital element of the con law of contracts. So consideration is anything that can be bargained for between the parties, all right? So it is simply something of value that is exchanged between the parties. To qualify, it must be legally sufficient and it actually must be what you bargain for in the contract. That would qualify as consideration. I had mentioned earlier in the marriage contract, which literally what it is, and you will hear your pastor say the marriage contract at some point in the discussion. In that is love, honor, and cherish. In all contracts, there has to be some consideration. In it, and the value of the grantor places on the consideration must be the same the grantee places on it so that it is both parties agree that it is in parity or equal. What I mean by that is both parties must agree that, hey, love, honor, and cherish to my spouse has value just like the love, honor, and cherish from my spouse has value to me. In our deals, we are dealing with the conveyance of a freehold estate. In the conveyance of a freehold estate, the only thing that really has value, bang, money. That's the value right there for the conveyance of a freehold estate. Because we deal at an arm's length transaction, stuff like love, honor, and cherish doesn't cut it. It has to be money. Now, <clears throat> if we are conveying a leasehold estate, meaning that we are actually just leasing the property and we will get into the difference between a freehold and a leasehold in a, another lesson. But currently in the leasehold estate, remember you are leasing it for a determined amount of time. Then it will come back to me i.e. at the end of a lease the property comes back to me and all of the rights in a situation like that where I maintain an interest in the property we could actually use the repair of a tenant the repair as actual value so in theory if you lease a property and you say to your tenant, hey, if you put a new roof on it, I will then allow that to count as two months rent and come back to me so that when it comes back to me, my house will now have a new roof on it. There is value in that. And that is simply because I have maintained the interest in the property through this leasehold estate where I get the property back at the end of a time frame. In a freehold estate, I am giving away all of my interest, so therefore whatever you're offering up has to equal the total value of that piece of real property, which is money, okay? So consideration is a vital element inside of the contract. And I mentioned earlier, we have this thing called a deed that transfers that interest. That deed also is a legal contract and must have a value con with it. That is why there is that generic term inside of a deed that says for $10 or other good and valuable services. So there is a nominal amount 
placed upon that deed, when it gets sold, you get to have a definite, <clears throat> there has to be a definite value inside of that deed because that is what conveys that freehold estate. All right. <clears throat> so if you have any questions, I do want to remind you to uh, send me an email. I'm at Raymond at realuniversity.com. So if you're having questions about any of this, feel free to send me that email or give me a, a call here at the office, potentially stop by, send a Facebook uh, message, and I'm on Twitter. You can send smoke signals or a carrier pigeon or whatever you need to do to get to me. But feel free if you've got questions to uh, get a hold of me. All right. Hey, we're still going to talk a little bit more about contracts. You're doing the 30-hour post-licensing course. You're doing a great job so far. We've still got a lot of time ahead of us, so let's keep rolling.